Welcome to the Hockey Writers Sabre Scoop, a weekly show with our top Buffalo Sabres writing crew, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From training camp to the playoffs, from draft day to the trade deadline, our team covers everything that happens with the Sabres. So get a pen and paper and turn up the volume. You're about to get the Sabres Scoop. Sabre Scoop. Welcome to Saber Scoop, presented by the Hockey Riders, a once-a-week show covering all things Buffalo Sabres and NHL hockey. We thank you for joining us today, and to make sure you don't miss any future episodes, be sure to subscribe to and like our show on YouTube and catch the great hockey content on thehockeywriters.com. You can find us on Twitter at SaberScoopTHW and everything else at the Hockey Rider. And also, as always, make sure you head over to MorningSkate.io. Not sure if you heard this news, but I definitely did. You better sign up for this Morning Skate newsletter because your very own Jordan is a contributor to it now. So you should definitely check it out. Jordan, I'm not sure if you've written any you know, interesting segments you might want to share in this opening, but let's not miss the latest and weirdest hockey news every day. Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm now officially a contributor. I just started this past week. It's definitely a fun thing. You'll see my takes in the debate section of it. You might see me do the weekday wraparound section, but I'm just helping out whenever I can. And, you know, the team over there with Kyle Knopp, Christy and Ben, it's just uh, we're putting uh, pretty good content out, I think. So you definitely should sign up for it. Awesome. I totally agree. I get that to my inbox every morning and everyone else should, too. Definitely. And, you know, we got to start off with some Sabres news here because a lot's been happening on, you know, the preseason. It's just about the end here because guess what? Six days, the NHL regular season is set to start. So some decisions ultimately have to be made. And the Sabres have made a number of interesting transactions in the last week, which includes sending some intriguing players down to Rochester in the AHL. So officially, they've set, they've actually reassigned guys like Uko Pekalukanen, Oscar Laxanen. Brett Murray and Jack Quinn. That's the highlight name right there. Mm -hmm. Those guys, you know, they had interesting camps too. They weren't bad per se, but maybe they would given them some more time to develop. You know, the roster is starting to take shape here as we approach the last preseason game and start of the regular season. So I'm going to propose this to you, Brandon. Which players that were cut surprised us the most? And which players do we think will make the opening night roster? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. The player... That really surprised me the most was Brett Murray. And I don't know if this is a guy who has gone under the radar, but to me, he certainly has not. I mean, from the prospects challenge, he's impressed. He, he was scoring, he was driving plays. And I know he's not your guy who's going to score 30 goals and 60 plus points, but he's a power forward and that's how he's built. And I think he has a lot to offer to a team like the Sabres are, especially with the makeup, their roster right now. I think Brett Murray was my most interesting. A close second would be Lukanen who I thought was going to be on the opening right night roster, but it looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for him. I don't know if you had any surprising cuts to you. No, I think most of these made sense. You know, some might argue why Jack Quinn didn't stay. You know, he, he wasn't necessarily bad, but I think you kind of could tell by his play during 5v5, which matters the most. You know, I find in the preseason, a lot of people just tend to always evaluate strictly. You know, they see some nice moves on the power play by players that usually won't even be on the power play during the regular season, you know, so... I ultimately, you know, decided Jack Quinn wasn't really that great. You know, I think he has, I would rather see him develop in a top six role in Rochester than play on the third line at the NHL level. I think that's better for him. Guys like Brett Murray, certainly impressed. I'd be pretty surprised if he doesn't get any time this year. I think they're going to, he's going to earn a call up at some point based on how he's played. Based from development camp, as you said, the prospects challenge. He's really impressed as well. Uko Pekalukin, and you'd have to think, earns his way back up because currently the Sabres have Dustin Dukarski, who's actually <laughs> going to be an NHL backup, or maybe even starter, and Craig Anderson. Like We don't exactly. know what the deal is there, but yeah. <laughs> the, the goaltending situation remains to you know, kind of be messy in Buffalo at the moment. So in terms of that, yeah, it's going to be interesting with these guys. What happens, but a lot of them, you know, can develop in Rochester and ultimately, you know, guys at the NHL level like JJ Paterka, you know, this guy's mm-hmm. going to make the team, in my opinion, because he really looked good in all aspects, you know, <laughs> connecting with Anders Bjork on a few plays. Um, who also I thought looked good was Bjork. I mean, Victor Olofsson is ready to take a step forward, I think, this season after kind of having a not so great year last year. I'm excited to watch this team. Dylan Cousins even looks pretty good as well to my yeah i mean dylan cousins really impressed in the last preseason game and the sabers still have one remaining as we speak uh by the time our fans hear this it will be the night of or 
it actually might be the day after, but they have one more preseason game. I think Cousins was the most impressive in the last one. He had two assists and he had, he's had some very impressive, you know, performances in the preseason. Um, I agree that Olafson is ready to take a step forward. It really comes down to his five on five play. That's what I'm most worried about for him personally. But like you said, the goaltending is a huge question mark. You know, waving Aaron Dell is, is it's not, it's not surprising, but it's, it's sort of intriguing that they're going to go with Tokarski over somebody who they just picked up. I don't know though. Uh, or are there, is there any player that you think, or, or that's you're surprised is still on the roster as we head into the regular season? Uh, honestly, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I, I, I kind of agree with what they have so far. I know we're going to touch mm-hmm. on the waiver claim they just made from the Washington Capitals, you know, because that's quite fascinating. But this is a team that needs mm-hmm. NHL players in their lineup, you know. So in all honesty, guys that aren't clear cut, you know, prospects should be playing in the AHL at this moment. And uh, there aren't really too many surprises in my eyes. I'm curious to get your take on that. Did you have a surprise player? Not really. I was surprised by the... Honestly, I was surprised by the Brett Murray being sent down to the AHL. I understand why he hasn't really gotten a crack at the NHL roster, but I thought this year of all years would be his chance. And I really do like him as a power forward option on the bottom six of this team. And I really think just the makeup of the roster really allowed him to slide in. So he's my biggest, um, you know, missing out on the Sabres roster guy. But other than that, I think they're sort of on course. Um, But like you said, we're going to get uh, to their surprising waiver claim, which I think could pay off for them in the long run. Um, but before that, we do have to jump to a very big topic right now for the Sabres, which is selling tickets, specifically how much trouble they're having selling tickets. This is something I wrote about in my mailbag as an, uh, you know, a very um, dedicated fan asked about it. So a number of factors are making it extremely difficult for them to do that right now, selling tickets. Aside from the pandemic, which left a lot of people in a tough uh, financial position, there's also a staggering count of just how bad it is this season for the Sabres. So I'm just going to rattle off some stats. This is pretty much verbatim of what I wrote in my mailbag, but there's a lot contributing to this. And as someone, Jordan, who's you know just over the border, you're not too far away, Sabres games used to be affordable something you could go to but this season it's very complicated in the two preseason games the sabers have hosted they sold just over 6800 tickets versus the penguins and just over 6300 tickets versus the blue jackets now this is an arena that holds over 19,000 people and the actual attendance numbers on tv appeared to be even less than what they sold Since fans who bought full season ticket packages were charged for these games that means that the sabers have sold at least 6300 full season ticket packages but it used to be capped at 16,000. So it seems as though they've lost nearly 10,000 season ticket holders. Staggering number. It gets worse. Civilians are not allowed to travel from Canada to the U.S. because of COVID restrictions. And Canadians make up for up to 10 to 20 percent of the Sabres ticket base. Even more than that, fans must be fully vaccinated against COVID in New York to attend a game at Key Bank Center. And just 84% of New Yorkers currently have at least one dose of the vaccine, which means 16% of the state's population couldn't attend the games even if they wanted to. That's a lot of information. So I'm going to ask you, what do we think the attendance is going to be like at KeyBank Center this season? How is this going to affect this franchise? Yeah, you have to think based on the stats and the early sample size we have at the moment that the Sabres are going to be one of the worst teams in the league for attendance. And it doesn't correspond with the fans being bad fans per se. You know, we know this, the Buffalo has one of the best hockey markets out there when the team's winning. They're probably in that top 10, but ultimately because of, you know, just how crap the team's been, you know, just putting it out there like as it is really and what they project to be moving forward here, you know, not fans aren't dumb. They know what's happening with Jack Eichel, right? So they already know he's not going to be coming back. And uh, yeah, that I would see why the attendance probably isn't going to be that good this year. You know, there's been so much changeover you know and then there's been these half season ticket quarter season ticket business going on so a lot of confusion going on to, in the eyes of the fans and there's all these other restrictions and we're just coming off a pandemic like everything's timing really poorly here for the organization so i think the attendance is going to be bottom five in the league in my opinion i would definitely agree i mean i know the situation is tough for all teams right now but I think for the Sabres, it's especially bad. And just the decline in full season ticket holders that you see is really concerning. And, you know, at the end of the day, it, it might affect 
the ownership and, and when it affects the ownership that might affect moves that they're able to make as far as, you know, free agent signings. Are they willing to go after big name free agents? Are they willing to go after big name players and trades? And then how, I don't know if this will affect the Jack Eichel trade situation. Does it affect the players that they're looking to get back in return? I don't know. So I, th- I think it's more big picture here with how, how the ticket sales are really going to affect the you know hockey side of things, which is really concerning. But like you said, you know, if they are bottom five in attendance, I don't think it's going to be that way forever. Once a team gets competitive, which hopefully happens sooner than later, they're going to be back up there in the top 10. Until then, we got some player news to get to, so you can take it away. Yeah, definitely. We did kind of talk about it before in our preseason chatter, but we got to expand on this because we really got to get a sense of what the role J.J. Paterka is going to play here if he really does make the opening night lineup, you know. Because the deal with the Sabres is they usually don't, like their European prospects from overseas usually don't play right away. Like they set up with R2 Red Salina last year. Mm-hmm. But Paterka has been just so good here not just in development camp or at the prospect challenge in preseason producing being one of the best players on the ice for the whole team it's pretty incredible what he's doing here so i want to get your thoughts here brandon do you think he's making this opening night lineup and where does he deserve to play what line do you see him playing on i'd be really surprised if he didn't make the opening night night lineup and like you said the fact that he's still on the you know Sabres roster and he hasn't been reassigned either to Europe or to the AHL really says a lot about not only the way he's played but the way he's developed as such a young player I mean this is a guy who was just drafted and we're already talking about him making the lineup while guys like Quinn are getting sent down to Rochester so it really says a lot about his play we knew when we saw him play with Tim Stutzla at the world championships that this was a special player who was coming along a lot faster than most Sabres fans had anticipated I could see him playing in the middle six. I really could. And and alongside players like Anders Bjork, you know, a, a player who Sabres fans really haven't gotten to see that much of, but, you know, Kevin Adams is very high on. I would be excited to see those guys play together. I'm not sure exactly what line mates Paterka could be playing with, but anywhere in the middle six, I really wouldn't be surprised if he spent the majority of the season if indeed he does end up on the opening night roster. But, I mean, that remains to be seen. I'm really intrigued to hear what you say, though. Yeah, definitely. There's so many intriguing combinations there. I mean, putting them on a line with Casey Middlestad, who, you know, put up 17 points in his final 22 games last year, who potentially, I mean, if he can sustain that level of production over a full year, (laughs) playing with a guy like Paterka with his skill set, I think that could be pretty uh, intriguing if you wanted to make a second line combination. But then you have all the other options. You know, you have a guy like Vinny Hinnestroza, who, by the way, I mean, I, I... could have projected this already, but like the, he's been pretty good at camp as well. You know, and that's not too surprising to me because the analytics and underlying numbers, you know, have always been pretty high on this guy. He's a play driver. He can drive the play. This doesn't have the best finishing ability, but even in his short little stint with Chicago last year, he put up 12 points in 17 games. So I mean, you put a, him with a guy like in who could produce potentially like that on the bottom feeder here in Buffalo. There's a, f- a few options here, honestly. So I definitely think he should be on this opening night lineup. And ultimately, I think he could be an actual producer here for this team. I totally agree. And I think the key aspect of why there's so much potential for Paterka is because, like you said, this is going to be a bottom feeder team. The players who are on the roster, all 12 forwards, they're going to have the opportunity to put up points. I mean, especially if you put them alongside somebody like Middlestat. To me, Middlestat and Cousins are sort of interchangeable as the one and two centers. Um, but yeah, anybody Paterka plays with, even if it is Henestroza, I think everyone's going to get a fair shot, especially under Don Granado's leadership and the way he likes to change up the lines and structure the forward group. I really do see that. That plays perfectly into this waiver claim that um, our um, you know Sabres uh, colleague at THW, Carl, wrote about. This is Axel Janssen Felby off waivers claimed by the Sabres from the Washington Capitals. Scored 10 goals and 15 points in 31 games for the Hershey Bears in the AHL last year. Obviously, he was placed on waivers, and the Sabres saw something in, in him, and he debuted in the preseason for them, and I think he's going to make the opening night roster as well. Only 23 years old. Is he going to crack the bottom six forward lines? And, and how do we rate him you know, compared to everybody else on the team? Well, you have to think that he's going to ultimately make the team because he would have to go back on waivers ultimately if they wanted to send him down, right? So you don't mm-hmm. typically claim a guy like this and just put him back on waivers because in Washington would just reclaim him. So then you would just be doing that, uh, you know, just be a continuous loop at that point. 
And in terms of Fallaby, man, I mean, he does definitely have potential when you produce at that type of rate, you know, which is basically like a 30 goal rate or a 25 goal rate over the 72 game season there. That's really good production. And, you know, I'll admit, I don't know too much about him as a player. He doesn't intrigue me. I've heard he's a pretty responsible defensively as well. He's a two way guy. I'm curious. I mean, come to a team like Buffalo, you're going to get the chance, man. Like he could definitely easily earn his way up to a third line spot if he impresses enough. That's just the, the situation we find ourselves in. I'm curious too, because there's other waiver guys, man. I think the Sabres, this might not even be the only guy, like a guy like Jonah Gajovic, apparently had multiple teams claiming and wanting to get him before ultimately went to San Jose. I wouldn't be surprised if Buffalo was in on them. A guy like Pierre Engvall in Toronto projects to potentially be on waivers. Some people believe in the next few days. And uh, I could see Buffalo even looking to put a claim on him. So these bottom six forwards, which the Sabres are kind of lacking at the moment in terms of having quality guys, they have a ton of quantity though. But yeah, I could definitely see uh, he's going to he's gonna make the team and I think he's going to be in that third or fourth line role for sure. I definitely agree. I mean, outside of Zemkis Gergensen, who I'm excited is returning to the team, honestly, uh, the bottom six has been a revolving door of a bunch of different guys who just haven't seemed to fit with the Sabres. I think, uh, you know, Fialbi and some other players that they've picked up, as well as young prospects who are looking to make the team, I think they could really make an impact and really show that they deserve to be in the NHL this year, which could make for some exciting hockey to watch, which is really all Sabres fans can hope for at this point, which I would be excited if there were some close games and the Sabres made some noise and played spoiler to some of the better teams in the Atlantic. Um, With that being said, before we hop into some general NHL news, once again, you're watching Sabre Scoop presented by the Hockey Riders. Make sure to subscribe to and like our show on YouTube and catch the great hockey content on thehockeywriters.com and on our Twitter feed at SaberScoopTHW. Jordan, there are some interesting general NHL news topics that we've got to cover. So why don't you hop to the first one? This one coming out of Vegas with the Golden Knights. Yeah, it's been a pretty news-heavy week in the NHL. And that's just, it's going to be an interesting start here to talk about because Robin Lehner has single-handedly been speaking out against the, these serious issues going out on in the NHL. And ultimately, what happened here, we'll break it down. Lehner posted several tweets siding with Sabres center Jack Eichel. So we all know the situation going on with Eichel regarding his medical tug of war with the Buffalo organization surrounding his neck surgery. Lehner and Eichel were teammates for a few years here, so they obviously have a clear standing relationship. He also sent out tweets criticizing Flyers head coach Alain Vigneault for treating people uh, for treating people like robots, not human, and asking for the NHL to fire these dinosaurs and accused NHL teams of improperly giving players prescription anxiety drugs and sleep aid. So this is obviously incredibly serious stuff. And a day after, ultimately, it came out that the NHL wanted to meet with him for an interview. So coming out of that interview, we learned a few things here, you know, and this is actually a direct quote from Robin Lehner from his press conference with Vegas. The last 72 hours have been incredibly difficult, but also incredibly valuable to me, to my career and my life goals. It's been extremely hard. It's not easy to do this, but I had a great talk with the NHL and the NHL Players Association over the last day. I'm excited for the potential change that can be made to protect the younger generation, Lehner said at his press conference. He also did clarify on the state uh, claims on L.A. and Vigneault that he, he wasn't directly the one giving out those prescription drugs. You know, so that was kind of the confusion there. So ultimately, mm. he did kind of walk back on that. But we got to ask you this here, Brandon, to start off. What do we think of Laner speaking out on this topic so openly? I mean, it's it's true to character in that we've come to expect this sort of blunt honesty from, from Robin Leonard. And, you know, it, it started ever since he would became comfortable with being so open about his struggles with mental health. And as we know, covering the Sabres, a lot of the mental health struggles that he had happened during his time in Buffalo. So obviously we don't know any details, so I'm not going to speculate, but a lot of the accusations that he makes about, you know, um, under the table uh, prescription anxiety and sleep aid drugs that were are being prescribed to players could have happened on any of the teams he's been on. Cause he stated such, um, you know, it's the fact that the NHL is working with him on it is encouraging, but we don't really know anything at this point. Um, I do appreciate his honesty and something he said that uh, we didn't mention that I really liked was he said he doesn't care about the cup as much as he cares about, you know, 
just making sure that the players are looked after. And if that's his mission and being in the NHL, then I have to respect that. I really do. Um, so I, I appreciate everything Leonard does. I think it's really, you know, taking a stand and I'm really, really intrigued to see how it plays out because the fact that the NHL is working with him on it makes me think that something's actually going to happen remains to be seen, but I'm interested to hear what you think as well. Well, you made a key point there, Brandon. How is this going to play out? Well, Lena did make it clear that this is probably going to be more of a private matter moving mm. forward as of, you know, the public matter that it was made on Twitter. Now, that could obviously change very quickly here. You know, Lena is a pretty outspoken guy, but I could see it maybe not, you know, turning out too much of anything could, like some of these situations. Or maybe the NHL will surprise me and there will actually be some change made here. And specifically, you know, all of the complaints made of the NHL Players Association that's been going on for the past year, how they're basically useless, you know, well, especially if you're retired too. Like if you're a retired player, they basically do nothing for you. So, I mean, if they actually are working good here, and that's, a, I mean, somewhat of a positive thing to hear. And before we move off this topic, I'm just curious. You now, we obviously cover the Buffalo Sabres. Does this, you know, change our perception of the Jack Eichel situation, yeah. having heard what Robin Lehner had to say on the matter? It definitely implicates the Sabres in a negative light. And to elaborate on that, Leonard's been pretty clear that when he suffered an injury that kept him out for an extended amount of time, when he was with the Sabres, he believes that it was because of the doctors and how they rushed him back into getting on the stationary bike too soon and getting into practice too soon. And eventually his ankle swelled up so bad that it kept him out and he had to have surgery. So I understand why Leonard is very adamant about his thoughts on the Eichel medical situation because he worked with some of the same doctors. It definitely makes me skeptical about how this entire Eichel medical situation has been handled. And it just leaves me with a lot of questions. Are these the same doctors? Are they, you know, are the Sabres correct in, in their medical evaluation? Is Eichel's doctor correct in the evaluation? There's so many questions. Like you said, I'm not sure if any of them are going to be answered, but it definitely shed some more light onto Eichel's personal situation. And it makes me really hope for him that he gets this all taken care of and just, can just get back on the ice with whatever sweater he puts on. Well, I have to agree with you there. And for me personally, it did change my perception a little bit, specifically, you know, pertaining to the ankle injury, you know, and ultimately him not agreeing with the Sabres doctors because now that's multiple instances, you know, there could even be more. And it's not that these don't happen with other NHL teams. You know, there were times where I remember even Nikita Sashkinov complained about it with the Leafs who supposedly have the best medical staff. But when you have these type of, you know, reoccurring issues over the past decade, you know, half decade, a decade with the same team, same organization, you know, generally the same staff that's working on like on the medical side there. I know it's kind of changed a bit, but it's not good, man. And even if it has changed, you know, that's kind of just showing the same patterns are still developing here. Nothing is really changing, even if it is different personnel. This isn't a good look at all for the Sabres organization that you have active players speaking out on this. And these are good players too. You have a guy, Robin Lehner, who's one of the better goalies in the league and you have Jack Eichel, a top 10 center in the game. This is not a good look for the organization. It definitely is not. And I'm really intrigued to see if, you know, management is namely Kevin Adams. If he has anything to say about this, we haven't heard anything on the Leonard situation yet out of Buffalo, but you know, we'll see if that happens. Um, sort of in the same breath, but um, in a different vein. Moving on to the next topic here, Carey Price. Um, this is news that just came out today as we're speaking. Carey Price is voluntarily joining the NHL slash NHL player assistance program and will miss a number, sorry, a minimum of 30 days of play. So what's most important is that he takes all the time he needs to get it healthy. And we really do commend him for doing this. Um, I first saw this when his wife, Angela Price, posted on Instagram a short message about why Kerry was joining and sort of um, just you know, a vague update for fans to see. So there's no confusion there. Um, the NHL and the NHL Players Association said in a release that he would be away from the team while he takes part in the program. It didn't specify why he entered it, though, and there's no further comment from the NHLPA. Per Emily Kaplan of ESPN, of course, the NHL changed the name of this program over the last year from the Substance Abuse and Behavioral Health Program to the Players Assistance Program. Um, sort of to make it more broad <clears throat> because every you know issue doesn't have to do with those things. We've now seen guys like Price and Drew and fellow teammate take part in this. Two prominent names in the sport, 
you know, has this name change clearly had an effect for players to open up about this topic? That's going to be my first question to you. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. You know, you have like two guys on the same team. So you obviously think they're probably communicating back and forth on this. And, uh, you know, seeing the reception, you know, the reception, sorry, that Jonathan Drouin is getting to Montreal right now, coming back. The fans are clearly supporting him, and he's honestly playing at the top of his game at the moment. I can see a real good season for him. But that's because of what's happened off the ice and him mentally. You know, and he's been so outspoken on it. None of the on-ice play really matters in this situation like this. It's all what's going on with the human being. And Carey Price, man, one of the best goalies in the game coming off that Stanley Cup final run. Who would have really expected him that, you know, have like you just wouldn't expect it, right? But that just shows you. You can't just judge a book by its cover. So the fact that he's doing this, you know, at this very moment is going to inspire the next generation for sure of and hockey players. And it's ultimately because of this name. I think the name change does play a big part of it. You know, who like there's a huge stigma, you know, revolving uh, mental health or these abuse problems and having to say you're going to a substance abuse and behavioral health program. That's another <laughs> term that's intriguing there. You know, you just didn't, it was non-existent in years past. You know, you didn't really see guys, going into that program unless you're a guy like Slava Voinov, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't really want to be mentioned in the same breath as a guy like that. So I, I commend the NHL and NHL players association too. They've actually been doing a few things right here after many wrong stuff. So hopefully <laughs> there is some change in coming here because I'm glad to see that Carey Price is doing so voluntarily too. That's the key thing there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one thing you said that was really important is that it takes you know, some players being honest and open about themselves entering into this. I mean, we saw like even, you know, harken back to Bobby Ryan is a guy who I really admire for his openness about his struggles and whatnot. And obviously he benefited from this program. <clears throat> but guys like Bobby Ryan and now Carey Price, who's such a high profile player and a lot of people look up to, like his wife, Angela, said, you know, the fact that he's being open about it could help someone down the road, which is all about helping the next generation of NHL players, which is very important. So, you know, here's a question for you again. What should we tell people that so badly want to know why Carey Price is enrolling in this program? Because, I mean, you mentioned Jonathan Drouin. When he took a step away from the Montreal Canadiens and wasn't playing, especially when they were going on their run, everybody wanted to know. Everybody speculated what was going on with him. So now that no one knows why Price is in the program, what should we say to them? Well, I'm glad you really brought up that Jonathan Drouin point there because there are just so many tweets. You know, the Montreal media, you know, it can't be understated how, you know, investigative they can be, how hard they can be on their players. The fact that these are Montreal guys, you know, in the market doing this is another thing, you know, because they're going to get hemmed on this. And ultimately, man, it's none of their business. And it's really none of their business unless Carey Price decides to openly talk about it in the way that Jonathan Drouin is now. Then that's where the story develops. Because at this moment in time, you know, Carey Price is currently getting the help he needs. There's nothing really further to comment, as the NHLPA said in their media release. What else is there to really know about? Yeah, you, it's, not, it's not your place, man. Like, there shouldn't even be a conversation. And you know what? It has been better this time around compared to Drew. And I haven't actually seen it be, you know, to that level. So I'm, I'm glad to see that there's been some... Uh, involvement from the media i guess i should say there mm -hmm. that would be the correct term because it's getting better but ultimately if you have to ask yourself that question the answer is going to be it's none of your business yeah well i definitely hear you here and you know some players have helped take a big step in this matter i think robin leonard let's i mean let's go back to him he's definitely helped you know the NHL players and the NHL as a league take a huge step forward in this matter. And maybe that's why guys like price feel comfortable coming forward with this. So I think that's a positive thing. Um, like we said, hope price gets all the help he needs. Um, and obviously hope he can return to the game as quickly as possible, but you know, first priority is himself as a human. So I hope that turns out well. And um, do you have any parting words for our fans on that topic or otherwise? Well, guys, we're really excited to really get in here in another regular season, season two of Saber Scoop. You know, mm. it's kind of crazy to think we've been doing it now for this long, approaching 50 episodes here. But like, it's been pretty cool, man. I'm excited. We're getting better here. We are even going to have a new co-host starting next week by the looks of it. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, we'll definitely post. I'm glad, you know, we had a couple in the beginning and then it was just us, but we're going to bring on a third guest or sorry, third co-host. And hopefully a ton more of interesting guests as the season progresses. So I'm really excited for it. 
And yeah. Um, and as we wrap up the show here, we thank you for joining us. This has been Saber Scoop presented by the Hockey Riders. Make sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at SaberScoopTHW. And once again, make sure you head over to MorningSkate.io to sign up for our daily Morning Skate newsletter, which Jordan is now part of. So definitely make sure to sign up. Make sure you don't miss the latest and weirdest hockey news every day. Don't miss out on all of the great content on thehockeywriters.com. For Jordan, this is Brandon, and this has been Saber Scoop. Until next time.